Seeing as the hours arrived. Um, Are we recording? Yep. Okay. Yes, it's uh, five o'clock, and this is a meeting of the Old Colony OPEC Trust Committee. And I'm Charles Kilmer with the Old Colony Planning Council. And I'd like to do a roll call vote. Sean Noel. Here. Stephen Santisonio. Um, present. Pat Charamella. You know, Pat Samoa. And Charles Thank Kilmer you. present. So we That's have four or five. So uh, we do have a quorum present. Uh, next action item is reading of the accessibility statement and I will take that on. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print materials are available upon advance request. If you would like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833. The notice of non-discrimination rights and protections to beneficiaries with regard to the federal Title VI non-discrimination protections and the state non-discrimination protections is posted in this meeting room and is available on the Old Colony Planning Council website. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833 for more information. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is a review and approval of the June 11th OPEC Trust Committee meeting minutes. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Make a motion. Make a motion. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion and second. Um, do a roll call vote. Uh, Sean Noel. Accept. Steven Santisonio. Accept. Pat Taramella. Accept. And Charles Kilmer. Accept. Uh, motion carries. Minutes are approved. Thank you. And now we'll cede the floor to Plymouth County Treasurer Tom O'Brien. Well, that's that's kind of you to do that, but I'm quickly going to cede the floor to Kate Candy from PARS. Let me just say quickly as by way of introduction, thank you again for having us. We, of course, are excited uh, about what we offer. Um, we think that we have an ex exceptional program. I believe the secret sauce, and you'll hear this as part of the presentation, is our relationship both with PARS and with U.S. Bank slash PFM Management. Uh, we have Kate Canny here from PARS. We have Dennis Mullins from U.S. Bank, so we're available to answer any questions. But I know Kate has put forth a, a presentation, so I'm going to let her run through that. But rest assured, you have the A-team here. So if you folks have any questions, uh, we're here to answer them, uh, to go through this. Uh, we feel it's a real opportunity. As I've been traveling around, uh, more and more groups are joining us as they learn about us. Uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for governmental entities. We think we're a good fit uh, for OCPC. Uh, so with that, I'll turn that right over to Kate uh, for the presentation. Great. And, and if I could, um, before you go, Kate, and then Tom, um, just because there had been a gap from the last time that you came before, oh, geez, it had to be maybe at least a year and a half, if not two, um, when we began this process of looking at alternatives for the OPEP trust account. Um, since then, we have updated our trust declaration. Um, as you heard Charlie talk about that there is a, a committee um, appointed as well as elected. Um, and um, that took a long time for us to get there, but we feel that we're in a, we're now in a, a good place to have a formal judgment, formal decision, and to have it be properly vetted. So appreciate um, Plymouth County is patient with us. And um, and again, we look forward to hearing what Kate and Dennis have to say. Great. Thank you, Mary. Kate? Okay. Um, so I have a presentation deck here tonight, um, but we're a small group. I'm looking at, you know, there are about six of us on this call. Uh, instead of me kind of lecturing, I welcome questions at any time. So please don't hold till the end. Um, I'd rather if you have a thought or a question, let's jump in and talk about it. I prefer a conversation than just me speaking to you. I think we learn a lot more about one another that way. So mm -hmm. if we want to go to the next slide. So um, PARS, uh, so we, we're here to talk about the Plymouth, uh, uh, Plymouth County OPEP Trust Program. And um, you know, Treasurer O'Brien uh, was very, 
thoughtful and kind of ahead of his time uh, when he approached cars in 2014 to work together to provide an OPEB trust funding program uh, for agencies in Plymouth County, which quickly, I think, before we even launched it off the ground, in included Barnstable, Norfolk, and uh, Bristol counties. And uh, what we've put together is a Section 115 multiple employer trust program. So that's a OPEB trust funding vehicle that's open to uh, public agencies, municipalities, special agencies, regional school districts, special districts to come together and invest their assets under one management umbrella. And the thing that really this was helping to address is every agency work with we work with, they have a quote unquote day job. They have something that you're focused on. Old Colony Planning Council has a mission and a focus. Um, managing an OPEP trust, not so much. So what we wanted to bring is something to uh, these agencies that was uh, straightforward to join, um, set up, brought very um, strong investment options with a low cost. So there's no startup costs, setup costs, things like that, and diversified investments. Because um, the charge we had from Treasurer O'Brien was, I want to keep the funds from these agencies where they belong, which is in the OPEB trust, not going to fees to start things up, not going to legal costs, not going to things like that. So I think we've done that and we've achieved that. So we put together a, um, a GASB compliant uh, trust program that brings a full service approach uh, to these counties. Uh, next slide. So this tr trust structure, we have, first of all, the treasurer and Plymouth County and the commissioners. They're the sponsor. They're they're the reason we're here. Um, and they're what drives us to do what we do. Uh, then we have the investment oversight, the committee, which is a investment committee made up of five members. Uh, the treasurer, Brian, serves as the ex officio chair. And then we have four members that have been elected uh, from, and they represent me, uh, member agencies. We have the treasurer of the town of Wareham. We have the school business officer from Cape Cod Tech. We have a member of the town council from Weymouth. And we have an employee representative from Quincy College. So we really have all of the agencies kind of groups represented on this. And they work with Treasurer O'Brien and Dennis Mullins, who's our uh, portfolio manager, to really manage the direction of the trust. Then you have PARS, that's who I represent. And we come in as the trust administrator and consultant. We're in charge of the day-to-day -day operation. We're an extension of your agency. So we are managing on a daily basis, the OPEP trust. It's the legal documents, the trust documents. We bring to it a private letter ruling. We manage and monitor all compliance issues on the state and the local level. Um, you know, when the governor's um, office put information in a state budget and supplemental, looking at OPEB trust, looking at OPEB funding, our team's there watching it, understanding it, and seeing if it's any if it's gonna impact you. Uh, we help with the audit and the actuarial requirements for an OPEB trust. We manage contributions, we manage disbursements. Um, and we do any sub accounting. We do have some agencies, a city that's a member that they have their OPEB trust fund and they have three sub accounts within their trust because they have broken their OPEB assets to represent three employee groups. Uh, teachers is one groups, our education, public safety, general government workers. So we work with you to make sure the OPEB trust fits your needs. Then we have uh, US Bank uh, serves as trustee custodian. Uh, that's where we stand in and US Bank is stepping in a, in a co-fiduciary role with you. Their role is to make sure these assets are being held and managed in the best interest of the beneficiaries, which today are your retirees and tomorrow are your current employees and the day after that are your future employees. So making sure these assets are held and managed in, the, in their best interests. 
And then PFM Asset Management is the sub-advisor um, who does the investment management of the funds. And I didn't know if Pat had a question. Yeah, my question was in regards to um, the three different programs. What's the difference between them, the teachers, the public safety, and the government workers? Oh, for this city, they have um, this a city that we work with has three different sub accounts because one of um, they are holding assets separately for the OPEB assets uh, because they have employees that are actually making their own contributions. So when you have public safety members, and it's all based on their contracts. Oh, okay. So, next slide. So um, touching upon this is just sort of our resumes. It shows uh, PARS. We began working with public sector clients in 1984. Uh, we have over 500 plus Section 115 trusts. Those are OPEB trust clients uh, working with right now across the country and over $8 billion of assets under management for Section 115 trusts. Uh, US Bank, uh, 161 years. Uh, the fifth largest commercial bank and the largest provider of OPEP asset custodial services. And then we have PFM asset management with over $229 billion of assets under management and a leader um, in the fixed income and multi-asset portfolios. And PFM stands for public finance management. They work with public um, work in the public finance sector. Next slide. So uh, we like to pride ourselves on that we are a one-stop shop. We're bringing in the whole solution to you. You're not having to go out and piecemeal it together. Uh, trustee and administration services, U.S. Bank serves that. Uh, ready to go, compli uh, fully compliant trust documents. Uh, this federal and state monitoring, as we talked about it. Flexible contribution and dis distribution options. We do not have a minimum contribution schedule. We do not uh, establish benchmarks. Um, we do not require annual contributions. We're also, these assets are yours um, and they can be accessed at any time. So as long as they are for a retiree healthcare purposes. Uh, we support and do full support of annual audit and GASB reporting. It's a busy time of year for my staff. Uh, the treasurer, we manage his OPEB trust. And when his auditor and actuary send him those questions that we need the following information on our trust, he's able to just send it on to us. We take care of it and answer it for him. And then what I really pride ourselves on is consulting. And that's, we bring this team together uh, to help you establish our, you know, what should our funding goals be? It's very easy to say, what is your funding goal for an OPEB trust? And say, yeah. fully funded. Well, it might be some other things. You may have funding goals to achieve by a certain point. Uh, you may want to start to establish a budget uh, line item for funding, things like that. We like to work with you to really educate you and see how you can best meet these needs. Next slide. And this is a um, just a quick overview of our current clients. Uh, there is one missing um, traditionally until they've signed all of their documents. Um, we don't list them, but Brockton Area, uh, Brockton Area Transit Authority uh, recently joined the PCOT team, so uh, which puts us at 35 local government agencies in the four county area. Next slide. So, the one thing that we really want to make sure is that um, we provide options for investment that meet the needs of our individual agencies. And we worked with Treasurer O'Brien um, and put together an investment committee that represents you, the members. And they work with Dennis Mullins, who's here on this call, to make sure that all the investments um, are held properly and are meeting the goals. So we put together four investment options, four portfolio options, because at some point or another, while we're gonna have different agencies at different funding levels, we'll have agencies that will be taking out access and accessing their funds to pay retiree healthcare. We have agencies that are in full growth mode. So we want to make sure that we provided 
investment options that met all their needs. Next slide, please. And um, Jess, if you'd like to talk about these four um, portfolio options, as he's the one who has designed these and provided these for our, our members. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as Kate said, we have four different investment approaches within the program because not every participating agency shares the same investment goals and objectives. Most of the assets are in what we call the growth strategy. And that makes sense because virtually all of the participating agencies are relatively new to the OPEB, um, you know, the, the whole OPEB process. So establishing the trust, beginning funding, looking for funding sources, trying to build up um, you know, sizable amount of assets to offset those, the present value of those liabilities. That makes sense that most of the investors then would be open to the idea of a fairly aggressive portfolio. The, the key ingredients into the, you know, the investment policy here are, are time horizon. How long do you have to invest these assets? We've seen tremendous volatility in the stock market just over the last few days. And it's a good reminder that the market is going to be very volatile, but if you have enough time to stick around, it'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, it always has. And so uh, depending on when you need to pull these funds out, how much liquidity you need, right now, most of the participating agencies need no liquidity. Um, so they're just, you know, again, putting away this money, trying to make a dent against those, you know, pretty sizable liabilities. So the growth strategy is roughly 80% in the market and about 20% in fixed income. Um, we have an aggressive growth strategy that's even longer term. Um, it's going to be more volatile, bigger gains in the up markets, bigger losses in the down markets. And we want to make sure everybody you know, has the, the fortitude to withstand those meetings after a period where the market may go down quite a bit. Um, <laughs> The balanced portfolio is roughly 60-40. And then we have an income portfolio that's roughly 50-50. And this would be for, you know, an OPEB plan that might be in the latter stages where you might be looking at drawing out uh, some of the assets to pay down, you know, expenses, that type of thing. So you'd want more liquidity in there. But we manage each of these portfolios um, as a pool. That gets the costs of managing these portfolios down, allows us to purchase funds in mutual funds and exchange traded funds that might have a very high threshold of initial investment, therefore a very low expense ratio. So managing, you know, using pools makes a lot of sense. There's no minimums. You can move between them at will. Uh, we don't recommend that um, because that would indicate that you're trying to time the market, I suppose. Um, and, and no one in practice has moved between them, but I think everybody enjoys just knowing that you're not committed to one investment strategy. There's no minimum length of time that you have to invest in them. And again, they're very easy to move between, um, you know, with, with no expense to you. So, you know, these are the investment options that, that PFM manages for the Plymouth County OPEP Trust. And if I might just add Dennis, excellent explanation. Of our 34 members, 33 of them are in the growth. 34 of the 35 will be in the growth. The only one that right. isn't is one that has a small number of retirees, is a more mature uh, fund. Uh, and really, growth is where almost everyone who's at our stage is going to be for a number of years. Because as Dennis said, this is a long-term investment, and we're playing on a long-term horizon. Right. Hey, Dennis, I got a question. This is Stephen. Um, you spent each entity can pick whichever um, um, strategy they want. Do you have anybody who's ever asked for, you know, like, and then can they, only, let me say this another way, can they only be in one strategy only? Or if someone came to you and said, we want to be in some in income and some in aggressive growth or something like that, I don't know why, but, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. So. You, you could, that's a good question. You could do that, but um, I share your, your uh, position on that. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, because if, you know, if you put half in income and half in growth, we could accomplish the same thing by putting everything in balance. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, sure. I work in a 401k field and some people invest in target date funds 
we'll set yeah. it and forget it. But some people invest in two or three time we target date funds. We say it doesn't make sense, but they do it. So, you know. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, yes, thank you, you could do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, moving on, next slide. So uh, one of the, uh, again, when we began working with Treasurer O'Brien, he gave us lots of challenges. Um, and as I said earlier, our mission is to provide you the best in class opportunities, uh, full service. But to ensure that these assets, which are your public assets and are oftentimes hard to come by for an agency, re you know, remain in the trust. So we've developed uh, you know, a fee structure that we're quite proud of, and it's based on assets under management. And so it's, it's set up into two buckets. Uh, there's the administrative aspect fee, which is based on your the agency's indi individual assets, and it's 20 basis points for the first 10 million. And then the second portion is uh, fees based on assets under management for the entire pool. So uh, the fee structure for that is set on the PCOT program balance. And you know the balance is now over $50 million. And so that has uh, reduced the cost substantially. So um, if you go onto the next page, we can show you an example of that. So we have uh, the fees have been reduced over 20%. So the all-in fees that an agency paid starting in, at inception, which is in summer of 2015, was about 51 basis points. And now at the end of the first quarter of the spring, which we calculated, we haven't calculated for Q2 yet. We're in the process of doing that. There was over a 25% reduction in cost of the program to right around 36 basis points. So as the PCOT fund that's the entire member's fund, grows through the addition of new members, initial contributions, continued contributions, and very importantly, investment earnings. As that fund grows, the fees based on assets under management continues to decrease, and that's passed on to our members. Um, and that's a model that we're really quite proud of. Uh, if, next slide, please. Nope, if yeah. you leave it there just for a second, sorry. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. This is all in fees, and you hear a lot out there yes. about what people are charging for fees. I have the pleasure of not only serving here, but as the treasurer for the Retirement Association, I can tell you these are the lowest fees out there. Nobody has fees that are lower. And what's what's remarkable is what we've set up here with a full service program. For this fee, you get the investment expertise that U.S. Bank and PFM Asset Management brings to the table. Uh, so that's really one of a, an additional component that people just don't fully appreciate uh, is the fact that we're driving down fees, as Dennis Mullins likes to say, it's one of the few things you can control. So we might as well control it to the downside. And we're here where we are so much faster than I thought we would be. We expected it might take us 20 or 30 years to get to 50 million in assets under management, uh, but it took us uh, about seven uh, years to get there or eight years. So well ahead of the curve, the fees have been down. The only people that have benefited from that are our members. So Tom, just to, just to uh, kind of clarify a little bit for me more than anything else, the 36%, uh, is that 36% of the overall system or is it 36% of the uh, principles in the, that the an agency would fund or is because I saw in the previous slide where, you know, you said you had up to 50 million, it was 0 0.009. Yeah, if you'll go Did back you... to the previous slide, good question, yeah. Pat. The short answer is we now, and yep, if you look at PARS, that's on the individual investment that each member has. So okay. if you have zero to 10 million invested with us, you get right. 20 BIPs for a cost. And as we know, basis points are one one hundredth of one percent. Oh, okay. But the U.S. bank assets are the total assets. We're now over 50 million. So no one currently, as long as we keep our assets over 50 million, is paying more than 29 bips to be a member of our program, which oh, is okay. significantly lower than anywhere else. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Now, as you grow your assets internally, the PARS rate will go down to the point where you're getting to 17 BIPs total. Uh, but that's what keeps us ahead of the rest of the world. No one okay. else has a program like this. No one else is driving, and it aligns our interest. Uh, because as we grow our assets, our fees go down. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So you can skip two slides now, I think, Charles. <laughs> so, and so this just shows the contributions um, based on the blended rate. If you had five hundred thousand um, dollars and you received no contribution, further contributions or investments, so you just had a static it would be a fee of $150 a month. So we just like to, for those of us who work to calculate things, um, that's how the calculation is done. So okay. next slide. And then a quick overview of if an agency wanted to join PCOT, um, you know, provided that they had taken all the um, legal steps of adopting Chapter 32B, Section 20, uh, adopting Chapter 203C. Um, we would then provide trust documents for the agency to review. Uh, we require a formal vote by the board for joining the trust. Uh, documents are provided to the agency for signature, and then uh, the account would be set up upon receipt of executed documents and uh, funding may begin based on chapter 203, uh, chapter 30B, section 20, which as you uh, spoke about earlier, uh, requires a 90 day hold when setting up uh, a new program. Yeah, actually, nice. Kate, if I, we stay on this for one minute, just because I think there's yeah. a couple of questions. Um, so in terms of these next steps, so for the council, Yes. They voted for their own trust um, committee, mm -hmm. which is everybody here but me. But um, and so the council pretty much had entrust is entrusting this um, committee to make decisions on behalf of the council. So when you say trust documents are provided to the council for review. Um, does it go just to this trust committee or do we need to bring it to the full council? Um, typically we require a full board, but we would have to review the document that empowers, uh, I guess your OPEP trust committee. Um, so because our corporate custodian US bank does require a board vote. So we would have to, we would have to let um, corporate council to, to, to vet whether or not what you set up take shifts it from your full board for um old colony plants and council to uh your opeb trust committee okay. so that would be something we would have to be how would have to review and, and, and if i could just due diligence and short q and qc so, yeah. so just to jump in this is becky coletta um what we did here was that we worked with um our council to set up trust documents a year or two ago and those mm -hmm. trust documents basically had us go through a process of electing, particularly for former um, staff members and current staff members, representatives to this council. And then the council was supposed to choose, according to the trust documents, the um, investment company that would manage the assets. So we'll say, um, but we, yeah, we. We'll send along yeah. those documents we, just so you can have a good review. Yeah, we would we would need to say so we have we have a master trust document and uh we would just have to vet that out to, to determine who we would have to have um to vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Charlie. So with regard to the uh, trust committee, do you see what the master in law is is it usually one person or do most have a committee of like the five required members? So, yeah, so under the uh, revised Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20, that um, auto uh, basically uh, automatically empowers the treasurer to be the signator, unless an agency decided to establish an OPEB trust committee or a board of trustees, as you've done. 
Um, right now, when I look, you know, at our list of clients that we work with in the Peacock region and outside, it's predominantly uh, the treasure. Um, I have, I think, out of all my clients, three that have established boards of um, trustees. And it's just a, it's a preference of the agency. And and just for the members who don't, may not remember, but so we had a, a treasurer, a lovely person um, who was, um, I would just say was aging to a level of um, capacity. And so that's when the members had just said rather than one person, and we do rely on volunteers to become the treasurer. So um, yep. hence that's why we, that that's why the council voted to go this route, so. Yeah. Thank you. And then for um for in the instances where we have excuse me, open boards of trustees, what they typically do is that board then appoints one person to be the signator for our account. So um, oftentimes it would be the uh the a current employee. I believe Mr. Kilmaner, you serve on that board of trustees. Mm -hmm. So it might be somebody in your position that we would have a, as a point person working. And we call that person the plan administrator. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we need to, sorry. So I, I might've missed it uh, earlier in the discussion. The, the actual age of PARS, how long? Pars was system? established in uh, Pars was established in 1984, and our first OPEB client was in 2004. And um, the, just a quick question in regards to um, overall, you had 34, um, 34 municipalities and agencies involved in this i know pause so, probably covers other areas so Par but I was just... no go ahead yes yeah, so it's it's 35 in the peacock program in the four okay. county area and okay. then um right and in new england itself i manage about 115 opep clients and then okay. pars itself has about 530 opep clients and you said you have you you have up to about fifty million dollars. Uh, is it fifty million dollars? Uh, yes. The, um, I would just yes, the Peacock, the yeah the Peacock the Peacock fund is uh, is about fifty one million. Okay, currently. I was just I was just curious how much of it was from the from the county itself. Well, that that um, as opposed to Bristol, Norfolk, and right, Barnstable right. counties. Yeah. I don't know if you have I, the numbers, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't have that number, but I could get that for well, you. Well, if you could, if Charles, I don't know if you can go back to the page with the list of all the groups. I wish I knew what page number it was seven. I'm guessing. And now that I see that Becky has joined, hello Becky, how are you? Oh, maybe she stepped away. So, uh, if you want to just look at this, Pat, uh, yeah. we can tell you the largest contributors uh, are the town of Weymouth and Quincy College. So both of those happen to be in Norfolk County. Our earliest okay. contributors are the town of Carver and the town of Wareham, which happen to be in Plymouth County. Uh, but yep. we don't break it down by county. The assets are kept unit by unit. Oh, okay. Uh, so each unit has their own. The value of collectively pooling them is to drive down fees and get investment right. expertise. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, should... Uh, OCPC decide to join, your assets are always your assets. Uh, right. And we just count them as a collective part to help drive down the fees. Uh, Plymouth County itself has contributed uh, a little over two and a half million uh, to the program. Um, again, our biggest contributors are the town of Weymouth. And and I just wanted to commend the team. The, the town of Weymouth was one of our early adopters, but they have a rather large finance committee. Uh, mm -hmm. and a finance team, they spent mm -hmm. six months deciding where to invest. Uh, right. And they decided to join us, uh, which we're very glad for. Um, and they have been uh, staunch advocates and 
uh, promoters of our program. We don't advertise. If you don't find out about us from word of mouth, you don't find out about us. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the town of Weymouth has been uh, a very good because they've done well with our rates of return and our performance uh, and the fact that we drive down fees. So uh, they're certainly one of our, our early value adds. But um, the city of Brockton has joined more recently. Uh, and I'm just looking. You can see we have fairly good representation in Plymouth County, uh, right. but we do we do spread out through all the counties. Tom, okay. I was a little surprised that you said that Weymouth, um, but with Brockton on there, I would have thought that Brockton would have been your largest. Yeah, Brockton, um, I think, as you know, has a lot of financial um, things that they're investing in right now. Yeah, uh, and so they haven't had some of the resources that perhaps others have to Understood. dedicate to this. I know they wish they had because their annualized rate of return has been about mm -hmm. 11%. So right. I do I do believe they wish they'd added more. <laughs> um, but uh, they yeah. what they've added is uh, is something that's done very well for them. Quincy College in its tenure has doubled uh, its assets just on the investment performance alone. Wow. All right, sorry, go back to page 18 or whatever we were on. I apologize. Yeah, Tom, before we go, do you have any other regional planning agency in there? I'm any sorry, say again, Pat? Regional planning agency besides? Other no, regions? although I, I think Kate just mentioned BAT just joined us. Yep. Uh, and I think you guys are probably ahead of some of the other regional planning agencies in terms right. of thinking about this. Uh, yeah. So perhaps you guys are thought leaders. Um, I don't know how many of them are thinking along the lines of long-term secure we, we investing. We have a great with... council, Tom. We have a great council. <laughs> there you go. So I, I, I don't know, but uh, as others are thinking about it, I think there would only be two or three eligible, Pat, because you'd have to be centered in Plymouth, Barnstable, Bristol, or Norfolk counties. Oh, okay. I, I will tell you, I get at least two calls a week from communities outside of those four counties asking if they can join PCOT. And the answer is no. Hmm. So just a little bit about us. Uh, our portfolio, our, our, our journey is very similar to that. Started about 12, 14 years ago. We have about a million dollars in the, in in the, the bus. Yep. Uh, I haven't checked the market this week. Um, it wasn't good. Yeah, except from a distance. And, and our full funding right now is based on the most recent actuarial analysis, which I just came out last week or two. Our target year is 2037. So is that the new report from Odyssey? Yeah. So just some benchmark there just to to let you all know where we're at in our in our financial journey. So I, I missed that last part, Charles. I'm sorry. It's harder so to hear I, the folks in that room. You were so your 23% funded? Uh, we're about 50%. Five zero. Five zero. Yeah. Our target year is 2037. Excellent. So, All right. so very, very similar to BAT. So, so and, and so, uh, let me, besides giving accolades to our council, I must also say that with Pat Chiamella, when this all came to be, Pat was right on top of that. I mean, it really, I, I've been able to see the documents and the work that Pat did. Um, certainly, um, he is one of the great reasons why we are in the shape that we are today. So, um, so credit is where credit is due. Great, thank you, Mamie. <laughs> um, hmm. You know, I guess, so now I guess paper, you know, the next steps, I know we went over a bunch of different things here today. So just kind of vetting out a little bit about our structure and then signatures and obviously the council, we talked a bit about the council's treasurer or in the case of the designated person. Um, but um, but I, I think I got a good sense about what we would need to do on our end. Were there any more slides we needed to cover, Kate? I don't think so. This is really, um, well, I guess this is when, um, once it, when you join PCOT, uh, we're kind of trying to keep it simple for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Your role and responsibilities are to continue following your funding plan. Um, we, and we do work with agencies to develop funding plans. Uh, submit disbursement requests when you're ready. Um, monitor 
reports on account and investment activity. Um, attend PCOP meetings, the investment committee when you when you're so interested. Uh, you mm -hmm. can have a member join the investment committee. That's pretty much uh, what we uh, require from you. Okay. Is there a next page? Is there next page? I don't. I don't think so. But I think it's just. Oh, yeah, this is just. Okay. Just these are just takeaways. Okay. Just to re revamp what we're doing. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we certainly, if there are other questions, I just am going to summarize the the real value add here is full service. There's no other group or entity that offers all that we offer between PARS uh, and uh, US Bank BFM Asset Management. You get that expertise at the lowest fee out there. Um, and uh, there are no fees to leave. Uh, that was one thing that I insisted on because that makes us very good. Uh, we need to constantly attend to the concerns, issues, and needs of our member units. And I'm pleased to report that no one has ever left uh, PCOT. There are constantly people that are trying to provide and devise different ways, uh, but the program that we offer is really quite candidly the best and the cheapest. Uh, and so there's no reason not to be anywhere else. Um, we're pretty pleased with what we put together. We have some expertise. We would love if you guys uh, wanted to join uh, and Kate will make that easy. She mentioned that anytime the auditor asked any request of me as a treasurer for Plymouth County and the other entities, I just simply forward the email to Kate and say, Kate, can you and your team provide all the documentation they need? And within 24 or 48 hours, that document comes back and is forwarded off to our auditor. So it's a huge value add. It takes all of that work off of my shoulders and off of my team's shoulders, uh, and it gets done very quickly. So uh, we're very lucky to have Kate and Dennis uh, and the teams that they bring to the table and uh, feel that we we have a real great product here. Um, I'm begging. I was just going to say, can I ask one more question? So one of the other things that one of our attorneys had brought up was the idea of joining a state program that I guess we'd have to get um, a vote to even allow us into. Um, are they able to achieve even more economies of scale or does it just become more bureaucratic and end up costing more in terms of overhead? So the, there is the state fund. Um, and obviously, they are very well run. Uh, they do a great job. Unfortunately, uh, they have certain costs that you just can't drive down to the level that we've been able to. Um, in fact, it was interesting when we started our program and we came in at the 51 BIPs. And Becky, I'm not sure when you were able to join. The state, I think, was at 110 BIPs. And so we felt that they would certainly try to get to our level. Um, and they're trying. Uh, I think all in there somewhere in the 60 range, uh, but now we're down at 39. Uh, so they just can't effectuate the economies of scale. They have overhead costs. Uh, they have other obligations. Uh, so they're just not able to drive those fees down. That being said, their investment performance is, is excellent. Uh, it's certainly on par with ours. Uh, there are years we do better. There are years they do better, uh, but they have the same objective, which is long-term investing. Uh, with various asset classes to drive performance uh, over a historically longer period of time. Okay. I didn't know where they're, um, I, I was on the call before I joined as a panelist. Um, so I was just watching, but um, I didn't know how high they were. I didn't realize they were over 1.1, you said? That was originally, they've driven okay. those down significantly, but okay. they're still not where we are. Okay. Yeah. People are, people will try to get to where we are. Um, I just don't know that they're able to. Um, again, the deal we struck with PARS and with U.S. Bank was we always wanted to be the lowest. Yeah. I'm just wondering if Steve, Stephen or Pat uh, on, on the online to ask questions. Uh, I, I already asked my question earlier, so I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Pat? Is it, I was going to say, um, Tom or Catherine, is it possible to get a copy of this PowerPoint? And uh, I have one more little question in regards to a uh, mentioned contribution. One of the things that we did when we set up our contribution was that if, if the agency ever ran into financial problems or some stuff, stuff like that, that we could hold off for a period of time and making the contribution. Is that still the case with uh, Plymouth County? The short answer yeah, is absolutely. So 
okay. We don't we don't have required contribution schedules. Okay. Um, you know, okay. we've worked with agencies and uh, while they like to plan and budget uh, for uh, OPEB contribution, sometimes you have years like 2015, when I exactly. think the state had 126 inches of snow and yep. budgets were being busted. So some of our members were like, we can't make it this year. Right. And, you know, we're here to we're here to support an agency, not be a burden. OK. So, uh, yeah. And okay. Pat, Good. just for your your purposes, the the um, Catherine had sent along the PowerPoint. It is in the Google Drive um, oh, okay. for all of the members, so um, um, we could let you know we could lead you to the to the link to that. But it's already in there. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else, Sean? No. And just for Catherine and Tom and Dennis purposes, so Sean is the employee um, um, elected. Um, learning a lot. Who's, <laughs> and Pat Chiamella is the retiree appointed to the board. And Charlie is the appointed by the president of the council. Um, right? Am I getting this all right? Correct. And then um, and then with Stephen, obviously the uh so we have one member, the um is um it had been Christine Joy, but as Tom, as you know, Christine um lost her bid, um, uh, but she we're hoping she comes back in a different capacity for us. So, so um, that's just again where we are with with um, with this element. Charlie, your turn. Your turn. No, I, I would just add you. You guys have done a great job. Um, you know, putting money aside, uh, we think we're a, a good fit to help you get the rest of the way. Uh, as Kate said, we're really here to help uh, take some of that burden off of you. You have a mission and it isn't OPEB management. It's helping others around your service area. Uh, and so we like to, to be the value add for you so you can focus on what you want to do day to day and take care of your employees. Right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you, Dennis. My pleasure. Yeah. Just double checking. Thank you. Any other questions, Becky? Not for me. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. So next steps are just, um, this group is going to have some discussions and then you'll certainly be back in touch and provide a bit of a timeline too about um, where the um, the trust is going to go, right, Charlie? That's right. So yeah. okay, we'll, we'll discuss offline and, and then go from there. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest great. of the summer. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. your time. Thanks for having us. You, Pat, if you can stay on. Sure. Okay. And then Stephen, did you leave yet? I didn't leave yet. No. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, everyone. I'm going to sign Thank out. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Mary, I have a hard stop at around six. Is there a, do we, we do we'll, think? We'll make it, we'll make it in three minutes. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Do I need to get off? No, no. You no. don't have to. Okay. So next steps. Do you, do you want to discuss? We have an open discussion item. Initial responses. The service element of it seems significantly better than what we saw from Rockland, I think. Uh, honestly, the audit and Gasby support, Brenda will be all in. <laughs> the low fees, too. I mean, especially that you know, they're not going to eat away at that, that, that's significant too. I mean, yeah. if he if he if he means what he says, they're the lowest. I mean, it does make a difference. Huh? Does anybody know what Rockland charges? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't either. Rockland's, I was just gonna ask Rockland's that. charges year to date were thirty three sixty one forty two uh, for the fiscal year ending June thirtieth. So, um, which what was that? Three thousand three hundred sixty one dollars, basically. Hmm. Um, I did some very quick math based on the numbers they gave us. They would think I would come in around thirty two hundred for the year, um, but with a far level, far higher level of service. So, so just for the timing of things, I know Stephen. Um, I know besides a hard stop today, I know that you have some um, um, scheduled personal things yeah. coming up. Correct. Um, yeah. Pat Chimel is going to be going on vacation. Um, yeah, the first I, two I, weeks of September. 
So the PowerPoint presentation, um, the statements, the OPED statements are all in the Google Drive as well. Um, I guess I would just advise maybe to, you know, we'll, let's let's do a touch base perhaps in about a month. Um, yep. It's gone to this point, but I think maybe as you as members can see what others, um, obviously with Brockton Area Transit joining, that's um, pretty significant for them to be having be joined um, to the to the uh, to PCOT. So, is there anybody at bat that we could talk with about yes. how they made the decision? Yes. And why? We were actually Charlie and I were on the advisory. Um, of you went to the meeting, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so we get notification, but we can certainly reach out to them. And Becky and, you know, we when Christine was here, she was involved with Plimpton and they joining. I mean, sure. um, so Becky, I don't know from your perspective. Um, I've always liked the idea that we would um, be with the county because it would sort of strengthen those relationships um, across the board. And I, I think overall, that's a good thing for our agency. And if we got stellar service at a good price, I think that would be terrific. That's but I'm, I'm not a voting member unless I, I have to take Christine's <laughs> place while she's gone. Um, and, and, and maybe Pat, just because you began with Rockland and, and you know, behind from back in 2012. 12. 12. Well, yeah. Um, the only thing I uh, I would like to take a look at, uh, you know, because I haven't been part of it for a while. Um, first of all, the yearly cost from Rockland Trust, and uh, and then we, you know, he, Tom mentioned about one hundred fifty dollars a month, which to me probably comes out to about seventeen hundred dollars a year, and like you said, uh, based on the services that they provide, that might be the way to go. But uh, I'd like to look at the uh, that handout a little closer and, you know, and Charlie, if you can get the information on the past couple of years and how much it's cost from Rockland Trust and what exactly, um, how they compare to the, uh, what Tom had just said today, you know, um, we will be getting a much better service from the county, I think we probably will. So, um, so I think to this point, analyzing what they provided us, um, perhaps we can identify a couple of contacts in one of the, um, you know, Weymouth or wherever to have some folks that they want to reach out just to have some conversation about their comfort mm -hmm. level look at some of those that had joined early on and some of the new members. Okay. Um, Brockton Area Transit certainly can follow up with them. And then for the next meeting, if I, I know it's kind of hard to predict, but maybe we can quickly look at schedules to, so we can walk away today with a date that would work for everybody, at least a tentative date. Yeah, I'm good after the first two weeks in, uh, in September, if that's a date that you're thinking. Yep. So, um, Stephen, how about you with your schedule? Um, I as I told you, the first, you know, like before the between like the first and the twelfth, I'm just kind of, I don't know when like I'm yep. going to be busy and I got to get stuff prepared for work. So I don't want to pin myself down with anything that I don't necessarily do outside of my regular work and other yep. stuff. So, and I'm off on vacation the twenty. What dates? Uh, the twenty first to the twenty third of August. So let's let's look at September. Okay. Let's what? look at September. Well, I said that in September. I'm trying to between the first oh. and the twelfth. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Oh, so, I mean, if you, if you can do the last week of August, that 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 probably the best bet for me. Like I know, because okay. we're looking farther out. So. No, I think the fact that you're saying that's available for you, we can aim yeah. for that. Yeah. So last week in August. Last week of August. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't mean I don't want to like, like screw anybody else up. But that's I'm just kind of, well, and kind of trying to back of, into what I got yeah. going on. So 
Hubba, Charlie just put up on Hubba August 28th at 5 p.m. We're not doing council meetings, correct, for August? That's correct. So. Yeah, that'll work so far for me, so. Is that a Wednesday? That is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me check in. I'm pretty sure. I think the last week in August was good for me. Okay. I'm just double checking. Yeah. All right. Let's make that. And um, we will continue to keep it as a hybrid um, for ease of folks, because I think it will just be a matter of we'll try to do some analysis internally and then send that out. Or when we meet, we can kind of talk about the pros and cons. And mm -hmm. Becky, if you certainly have any other questions, we can try to get those answered in the meantime, too. Thanks. Look at Stephen, six o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion ready. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye now. Have Thank a you. Good bye -bye now. Bye. Have bye -bye. a good uh, vacation, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. You too, Pat. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.